Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Coco and Dolph's The Podcast. And it's been so long, I forgot how to do the intro, but I think I remember saying, I'm not Coco. And I'm not Daltz. And it's, I think it's been about five months since the last time we did a podcast. We didn't intend to take the summer off, but that's kind of how it ended up working out. So, Well, I think we pulled our hiatus is what we did. We did. And now we're back and we're better than ever because we're rested. <laughs> we're refreshed. We've had lots of opportunities to consume culture at a more gentle pace rather than the rapid fire (laughs) we gotta watch this we gotta watch that we gotta read this i mean we are in a 24-hour news cycle world now so so what you're saying is our listeners have forgotten entirely who we are and we need to reintroduce ourselves maybe our single drunken swedish listener is still (laughs) out there like refreshing his itunes app you know, podcast app. He's every... checking. He's like, I think this is broken. <laughs> right. Or wherever how you say that in Swedish. <laughs> Scabby canula. That is... I hope you didn't just swear in Swedish. I totally just did. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I know how to say in Swedish. And it's not. Right, I don't want to know. Yeah. All right. So we're here today <laughs> for this podcast to talk about a movie. Two movies. Oh, wait a minute. Two movies. What? Because what we did. <laughs> Do you want to tell them what we did, Coco? So Dalt's birthday was this past Thursday. He's 29. And <clears> we <throat> decided to have a weekend-long celebration of birthday festivities. So today we saw not one, but two movies at our local Cineplex. And yeah. And this can't, comes hot on the heels of yesterday, actually, actually last night's consumption of one of the greatest movies of all time. The Godfather. Which we're not going to talk about today no. because everybody's seen it, but it was a good movie, clearly. So I'm going to mention that now, and then that will justify me putting The Godfather in the SEO and so oh, okay. it shows up in search and stuff You're like so that. You're so smart. That's why I love so you. So now we're going to move on from The Godfather. <laughs> okay. So the first movie that we saw, oddly enough, was called Man on First. No, I don't think that's what that was called, actually. <laughs> it's called First Band. <laughs> okay. Like, you're supposed to play along and say, oh, okay, oh yeah, sorry. that's not Who's Adam Costello. Who's on first? What's yeah. on second? Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I messed right. that up. You totally messed See, we're rusty. Yeah. <laughs> Our chemistry is rusty. <laughs> Can you have rusty chemistry? I don't know if that's I don't possible. know. We, we used to have copious amounts of rehearsals before every podcast, and right. now we're just winging it. So. Well, so what happened was the studio crew that used to help us <laughs> got so tired of waiting around for us to do another <laughs> podcast. Because we're, you know, finding ourselves during the summer. That we they... had a gap summer, like teenagers have gap years between high school and college. Right. Yeah. Right. We been, went backpacking around the Berkshires, I guess. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh-huh. So First Man, starring mm-hmm. Ryan Gosling, is yes. the story about Neil Armstrong. And for those who don't know, <laughs> well then, what are you doing listening to this podcast? <laughs> No, don't drive away our one remaining okay. listener. So, Although I know my cousin wanted us to start podcasting again, so maybe we have not one but two listeners. And when we traveled recently outside of the tri-state area, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> we encountered many people who were saying, when are you doing the podcast again? And so this is a direct response. Listeners, we are listening and we are responding. That's true. So first man, Ryan Gosling. Yes. Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong, of course, being the first man to walk on the moon. Or was he? <laughs> we'll get to the conspiracy theories later. Well, no, worry. I think we should go directly to that, Coco. Because do, do you think so? Yes, because I think for you, this was a different experience watching this movie. The tale of building up to the first landing on the moon. Why do you think? Why do you think the way you think? Oh, okay. Um, wow. Okay. So I apologize for those of you who um, actually wanted to hear a movie review no, and no. are going to have to keep hitting like the fifteen second like fast forward button. <laughs> they do on that your... usually anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Just get to the end and give them the credit for the listen. <laughs> right. That's all I live. So I wouldn't say that I'm completely one hundred percent sold on the moon landing never happening, but I'd say I'm ninety nine percent sold on the moon so... landing never happening. And I'm not really one of those conspiracy theory people. Like I, I believe that Osama bin Laden got shot. You know. So you're so. saying that the moon moon landing was was staged. a hoax yeah area 51 baby it's all the set is there so give us some facts to convince us because some of us 
in this room here today. <laughs> you mean you? <laughs> Just you. Just and me, actually. I think my dog went downstairs. Yes, so and that a person also. Yeah. Um, we, uh, these people that are in the room now, we were very skeptical of the conspiracy mm-hmm. theories that you spouted off regularly <laughs> early on in our introduction. I don't know if I, what, was it regular though? I don't, I'm not one of those people who sits around and like mutters to myself. We would go to the restaurant and you'd be like, <laughs> I don't think they cook the food here. Just another conspiracy. <laughs> Just like the moon landing. That's Remember those, those days when you were I mean, more are, honest than you are now? <laughs> what? No, no. Wait a what? minute. No, this, I think we need to start over again because this podcast is just going off in like a really bad direction. Okay, so conspiracy theory. <laughs> So sell, sell me on the moon landing. If anybody out there hasn't seen it and you have Netflix, there's a documentary on Netflix. And, of course, I can't remember what it's called. It's probably just called, like, Conspiracy, colon, moon landing. But, uh, I think you're right. It's, uh, it really breaks down all the different ways that the moon landing could have been hoaxed. Um, or I, I don't think that's actually a word. But, okay. um, you know, just from, like, the typical stuff that most people have heard of, like the uh, the American flag flapping in the wind because there's space no is a vacuum and, yeah, and there's right. no wind on the moon. To other uh, shadows, more, and yeah, shadows being not the angle they should have been in for the angle the sun was in the sky, and also uh, the photos that were released, like crosshairs shouldn't have been in them and stuff like that. Like I can't really explain a lot of it because it's it's very technical but yeah so I saw that and I was already on the fence about it and then I saw that and I was like yeah you know what I think I buy all that so so I was a full believer in the whole the moon landing was legit until Mm -hmm. you started talking about me and and I was as most people are I was smitten with you and then I just became (laughs) enraptured and and swept away in your beauty and intelligence and and theories this is how cults get started isn't it (laughs) You are getting very sleepy. <laughs> so um, I was skeptical, but mm-hmm. being a very open-minded person and mm-hmm. being open to our love, mm-hmm. I also thought, well, I'll give it a try. And you brought me around, I think. I'm wow. not Now, I'm not 99% mm-hmm. uh, skeptical like you are, but I'd say I'm about, I'm on the fence now because mm-hmm. not only are there things that you mentioned about the moon landing, but also... Um, some of the other things that I found very interesting, like the technology at the time. Oh, yeah, exactly. Could not have possibly survived. They couldn't have survived the decompression and, mm-hmm. and the atmospheric changes and all that sort of stuff and the oxygen right. uh, uh, resuscitation and, and recalibration and all that sort of stuff. Right. You couldn't have paid me enough money now or then to get in that bucket of bolts right. that they built in the 60s with dinosaur technology. And you see the and, uniforms they had on, like the right. uh, the spacesuits mm-hmm. that were apparently really thin in those mm-hmm. days and they kind of looked like, you know, your dad's old coveralls that they slapped <laughs> together and <laughs> right. to give them a helmet to put on top of it. <laughs> right. And then you see when the guys are up in the, and the gals are up in the space shuttle mm-hmm. recently, more recently, and up at the space station, They've got these big, thick suits on, and everything is really mm-hmm. built for different pressurized situations. So, yeah, I, uh, you know, in, in in hindsight, I'm I'm with you there. Wow. So this all dovetails to <laughs> the movie First Man, which we are here to review. Which we are now ten minutes into the podcast, finally getting around to actually talking about. We have to reintroduce ourselves to the listeners. I'm not Dalt, and I'm not Coco. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that literally, but oh, okay. but that's good anyway. Okay. So, what did you think of the movie starring starring Ryan Gosling as Neil Morrison? No, not Neil Morrison. <laughs> That's a friend of mine, Neil Armstrong. <laughs> I was say, who's Neil Morrison? Like, is that like Jim Morrison's brother? Who is? Maybe I'll we'll like... try to edit that part in. So, starring Ryan Gosling as Neil Armstrong. <laughs> there we go. Um, it was okay. I I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I'd maybe give it like a B to B minus. It was too long. So, if it was a dessert, what kind of dessert would that movie be? Ooh. Would it be like a... It wouldn't be a souffle. It wouldn't be like a brownie. Would it be just like vanilla ice cream? It's like, yeah, I enjoyed it, but I'm not going to... It'd be like a flan. Like, I, I usually don't get flan at right. Mexican restaurants, but every now and then I'm like, yeah, I'll have the flan. Why not? Right. So... Okay. Yeah. What... what uh, I, I will say, though, Ryan Gosling, excellent, as always. Mm-hmm. He's so good. He makes it look effortless. Mm-hmm. And I also did enjoy the supporting cast. They were all very good. Mm -hmm. Uh, Claire Foy as his wife. She was fantastic. She was really good. I highly recommend her as Anne Boleyn in Wolf Hall if you have not seen the PBS miniseries of that. And uh, also Corey Stoll 
as Buzz Aldrin. He really wasn't in it very much. It was basically a glorified cameo, but I thought he kind of stole every scene he was in. Yeah, so, he was good. But yeah. I think Buzz Aldrin is an interesting character, too. So it's, it's <laughs> yeah. sort of like playing, sort of like Batman and 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 the Joker. Right, right. Yeah. Like the villain mm-hmm. is always going to be the more interesting guy, or the, yeah. the edgier mm-hmm. guy is always going to be the more interesting guy to play. Yeah, so what did you think, Dalt? I... Uh, so Ryan Gosling, I agree, very solid. Mm-hmm. I figured out Ryan Gosling though. Oh, oh, the, I've seen a lot of his movies, and mm-hmm. I am a big fan of his. And of course, he being the same fellow Canadian, he's a fellow Canadian from the same country as I am. So mm-hmm. we must embrace all that is Canadian. Mm-hmm. That's the way we do things. Mm-hmm. Um, I figured out the way he did. He did this in Blade Runner twenty forty nine too. Is that so? He acts very subtly, very mm-hmm. mildly, very not really acting, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden he'll have a an outburst, uh-huh. which he did in Blade Runner 2049. And also this outburst, I won't really spoil it in because uh, there's a major plot line here that we didn't talk about that mm-hmm. is a thread that I didn't know about before going into this movie. Yeah, I didn't know that either, actually. So um, I don't want to spoil it, but there's a similar outburst moment, an emotional outburst moment mm-hmm. that sticks out for his character in that movie. Mm-hmm. And so that's the way he seems to operate. And there's a couple other movies. I think the... The Tall Pines or whatever that movie was he was in The with. Place Beyond the Pines. That's it. <laughs> with Bradley Cooper, which is a segue oh! in some ways. I didn't know Bradley Cooper was in that Yeah, one. Bradley Cooper was in that, if I remember correctly. And um, there was a similar type thing in that scene, oh, in okay. that movie, where he was like the cool cucumber and then off mm-hmm. the rails all of a sudden and then back. So overall, the movie, to me... I thought it was I to me it was vanilla ice cream. It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. I I enjoy vanilla ice cream every now and then, but if I get it all the time, I'm mm-hmm. going to get bored of it. And again, you know how that movie is going to end? Right, exactly. You know how it starts uh with the well, a little bit of knowledge of the space program is like it was it was the wild west. It was mm-hmm. cowboys and and guys who wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't, you know, they they were the the heroes and they were the rebels and they were the guys that they the misfits and all that sort of stuff, right stuff, the movie, you know, like all that kind of stuff, you know where it's coming from, right? So I will say I, I did think uh, the director who also directed Ryan Gosling in La La Land, he... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I thought he did a really good job, even though you know what happens, like building tension. Yeah. Like in the one scene uh, when he goes up and they're supposed to redock the module with the other bit... And then I'm not. I'm not. That's a, pretty technical. I'm. I didn't major in a STEM category. So what? I was an English major. I know. Uh, that fools me. I know. That astounds me. Since I say like eight thousand times during each episode, I'm sure that astounds <laughs> our listeners as well. So and things went haywire, and they're rolling around in space, and you know he's going to survive it because you know what happens in the end. But it, I still thought the director did a very good job of creating dramatic tension, yep. like. You're still on the edge of your seat, and you're just praying everything turns out okay. And I also appreciated that um, I have motion sickness issues, and even though there was clearly a lot of space flight and things going wrong in space... And spinning. And spinning. It wasn't like Blair Witch where, you know, the the shaky (laughs) camera, and you're like, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom. You know, I I appreciated that they kept that to a minimum. This movie is making me sick. Yeah, and we didn't even have a popcorn bucket for me to hurl into if I needed to, so. I, uh, so I'm gonna ignore that. And I'm also gonna (laughs) say about the, uh... Where was I going with that? <laughs> I don't know. The hurl threw you, you the off. The hurl totally threw me off. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Spinning thrusters. So, uh, stem. oh, I knew where I was going. The okay. cinematography <laughs> was very well done, but mm-hmm. it was not what you think of when you think of a space movie. Right. So exactly. there were not a lot of broad horizons. There's uh-huh. not a lot of art, you know, the earth as a semicircle right. covering the entire screen. Mm-hmm. It was very claustrophobic. There was very a lot of tight shots. Yeah. I think that was intentional. I think you were supposed to be like, oh my gosh, these guys are in this capsule and you can right. barely move and you can barely breathe. And and there were also a lot of like tight close-up shots of just Ryan Gosling's eyes, which I appreciate because basically it's a character study of Neil Armstrong. Right. Like it's not, even though it's secondarily the story of the space program, it's not the story of the space program. It's, it's the story of this one man yeah. and this particular time in his life and everything happening with his family and in his career. And so that's why when the big brouhaha happened about they didn't include a scene of them planting the American flag on the moon, yeah, I was okay with that because that's right. not what this is really about. It's about this one man and his quest to do this one thing. And 
Well, and I, yeah. I like that too because there wasn't a lot of even though I said uh, this was the expected movie, they didn't do or like the story. You know the mm-hmm. story. They didn't do it in an ex- in expected way. So, right. to my point about cinematography, to mm-hmm. your point about the flag. I mean, we get the speech when he steps off because yeah. you can't do a Neil Armstrong movie without that line. Right. But there was a lot of stuff around it that we learned of, mm-hmm. like for example, the Gemini Project. <laughs> <laughs> the Gemini, as I as I learned at the beginning of the movie, that was what I learned the most out of this movie. The, the best topic was that I've been pronouncing Gemini wrong all this time. As have I. And it, what, what was it in the movie? Geminini? Gemini. Gemini. Yeah. And repeatedly. And yeah. regardless of where the person was from in the country, they all pronounced it that way. I don't believe I've ever heard it pronounced that way. So I don't know if that's just been a change in pronunciation, like how language just evolves right. over the past right. 50 right. years. Like a, or, the use of impact, for it, example. Or literally. Or literally, yes. <laughs> so I... The first time I heard that, I was kind of jarred, like, w- right. WTF, okay, that this one person is pronouncing it funny, and then right. everybody pronounced it that way, so. Well, and it helped because they put Gemini on right. the screen, uh-huh. and then so that you were expecting it, and then when you hear Geminini or, or whatever. <laughs> Jiminy <laughs> Cricket. Ge- Gemini, or whatever, <laughs> yeah. however they pronounced it, yeah. you knew what they were talking about. You could make those connections. So if any of our listeners does have a STEM degree and can enlighten us as to why Gemini is not pronounced Gemini... Please email Coco and Dolls at gmail.com <laughs> or drop a message on our Facebook page because we are interested in what the heck is going on there. So speaking of what the heck is going on. Yes. The other movie that we went to see today. Yes. A Star is Born. That's quite the double. That was quite the double and I'm ashamed to say that we paid for one movie, not two. Well, I paid for an entrance for me, and I also paid for an entrance for you. Oh, I see how that works. I mean, we paid for two tickets. That's true. That is true. We need to stop advertising the fact that we don't pay, because eventually somebody is Nobody's listening. (laughs) That's true. My cousin in Seattle isn't going to call up our local theater and be like, hey, keep an eye out for these two middle-aged people. (laughs) These two dodgy-looking characters. (laughs) They're not going to buy anything in the concessions. (laughs) We should have bought the popcorn. We probably should have. Yeah, that's it. So, A Star is Born, starring Bradley Cooper and Lady Goo Goo, <laughs> who is also yes. going to be in the Queen movie, I think. Yes. Radio Gaga. Radio, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> Lady Gaga, sorry about that. And it was, what did you think of that movie? Coco? No, you, you, you go first, because I went first last time. So. No conspiracy theories around A Star is Born, FYI. No, no conspiracy theories, and nothing really to make it interesting. I thought that it was fine. Again, mm-hmm. another vanilla movie. Oh. I knew what was going to happen, sort of. I mean, I didn't watch the Chris Christopherson, Barbara Streisand version. From the reviews I've read of that, I think we're better off. Yeah, right. And But I sort of knew the general. You know where I learned, actually, when I was a kid, I used to read Cracked Magazine, which is like Mad Magazine. Oh. And they used to do movie parodies all the time. Oh. And so... That was when that movie was released, when I was reading Crack Magazine. So I uh-huh. knew the story of A Star is Born from Crack Magazine. Mm-hmm. And they used to make fun of Barbara Streisand in that and her uh, prodigious nose. And, you know, those were different times. You can't, help, you can't help what you look like. You can't be a nosist anymore. What, what would that be, actually? Would it be a, a I, rhino? Rhino. I, I don't know. Yeah. So that's how I learned about that story. Mm-hmm. And so I knew the basic plot is where uh-huh. I'm going with this. And I thought it was fine. I thought it was... I was impressed with uh, Bradley Cooper's Serial singing. killer eyes? No, no. <laughs> singing and guitar playing, but I think I was supposed to. He, he spent something like three years learning a guitar or something like oh, that wow. and learning mm-hmm. to sing and got mm-hmm. all sorts of coaching on that. Lady Gaga was really good. Mm-hmm. I thought she was... She was better than I thought she was going to be. Definitely. I mean, all musical artists act in some way, shape, or form, so it's mm-hmm. not like they're starting from scratch. Right. But, but you can go like the Madonna route with your acting, right. or you can go the Barbara Streisand route with your acting. You right, know? exactly. There's two directions there. Yeah. And I thought she was great. Um, the uh, The music was pretty good, actually. Mm-hmm. I thought the the one song that he played at the beginning was really good. But it just didn't, I don't know, it just didn't do anything for me. I got no wow. zip out of that movie. I, wow. It was fine. I was sitting beside you the entire time, so I enjoyed that. <laughs> This was your birthday double feature, and it was just like... Yeah, but the movies were my selection, so it's well, all on me. Well, no, we, we collaborated on the selection. You think so, so? Yeah, I think so. So what did you think, Coco, of A Star is Born starring Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga? I very much enjoyed it, actually. You did? Okay. I would give it like an A- or a B B+. So in the dessert theme, 
Where oh. would you go? Oh, wow. Is this like Nanaimo bar? <laughs> butter tart? Oh, I don't like butter tarts, actually. Oh, oh yeah. well, don't tell my daughter that. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to have to because then she can have all my butter tarts. <laughs> Although maybe I shouldn't then because then she'll want all my butter tarts. And she'll eat all your butter tarts. Yeah. <laughs> and then there'll be a sugar high bouncing around the house. Yeah, I don't, ooh, I don't know. I mean, it's maybe a chocolate lava cake, which I know puts me like right in like 1997, but I don't care. You like what you like. Who cares? Yeah, you like what you like. No, so... I, I, I liked it. I liked Bradley Cooper. I I didn't always believe Gaga. Um, I, I could see her... You could see her acting sometimes? Acting sometimes, yeah. but I bought the love story between the two of them, like the first half of the movie when they were getting together and they were falling in love. Like oh, yeah. I, I bought that. Yeah. Um, Sam Elliott, I don't see how there's any way he doesn't get nominated for an Oscar so for this I, movie. I thought he was fantastic. He was fantastic, but he's always the same in every movie. I know, but... And I was, it was at one point there where I was thinking he was going to just... Because he does that lean with his head thing. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. And I, he does that in every movie. And at one point, I thought he was just going to keep going. And he was just going <laughs> to topple over and we'd see the bottom of his shoes. You know, like one of those... Yeah. <laughs> but he was great. He was great. Yeah, he was good. Um the uh, the music was really good. The music I, was really good. There's at least one song, if not two, that'll probably get nominated for Oscars. I think for original song. I thought you were going to say they will find their way onto your iPod. They 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 actually just might. Oh yeah, yeah. Because uh, I do have a Lady Gaga playlist for spinning, so I could put a couple of those songs on there. So. so I don't know much about Lady Gaga. I mean, all I knew before this movie was her in the meat suit yeah. on one of the mm-hmm. award shows, and then the. Uh, she was on a 60 Minutes interview that I saw, which was oh. very uh, mm-hmm. revelatory about her. Mm-hmm. Um, but I haven't really, I don't really know her music very well because I'm square. Um, but well, I thought she was, she was really good. She was really belting out the music. She's got a great voice. Yeah. If that's really her voice, and, mm-hmm. and I'm sure it is. Yeah. Uh, she was great. Her, her first album, like the Fame and the Fame Monster, like her very dancey, poppy mm-hmm. album, uh, that's very, very good. Can you do an, an example of one of her songs? No. Sing it for us. Pa 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 poker face, pa pa poker face, ma 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 ma. There we go. That's actually actually a song on the yeah, album. Yeah, you haven't heard Poker Face. Poker Face. Yeah. No. Okay. Actually, uh, Sam Elliott was on. I think Colbert lately, and mm-hmm. Colbert had him read like Gaga lyrics, and it was <laughs> like the funniest thing because he was like. I'm not bluffing with my muffin or whatever. It was like so funny. Like it was fantastic. But anyway, so yeah, so her her first album was really good, and then I think. Um, after that, she didn't have people around her who would tell her no. Ah, so for me, yes, that her her second album, I I didn't really like it at all. And then she kind of went into like the country territory, and but then she kind of rebounded with Tony Bennett. I love Tony Bennett because mm-hmm. I am also old and square. Mm-hmm. So I think she kind of rebounded with that, and you know, it, it's nice to see her kind of like find her way mm-hmm. back to not being in the the weeds musically but i will say that this has been this remake has been kicking around for probably about 10 years oh yeah and at one point beyonce was attached and i i thought lady gaga did a fine job i don't think beyonce is a very good actor (laughs) so the hive is going to come after us now so i apologize for all the hate mail we're going to receive but because we were loving on the jay-z that's that previous issue that's true edition or whatever we're on whatever kind of platform we're on yeah so i i i do appreciate that it was not beyonce (laughs) so that raises a very good question that i was going to ask you oh what's that so star is born gets made every i don't know 25 years or something like that it seems like Mm -hmm. so what's the next one well, I did. See, I didn't read any of the speculation, but I did hear that on the uh, interwebs, because it's actually been forty years since the last one was made, and okay. it had been about every twenty years. So, who would have been in the '90s version? Oh, that's a good one. I think Gwyneth Paltrow definitely would have been Gaga in the '90s version Gwyneth because Paltrow? she was she was the '90s it girl, mm-hmm. and also she fancies herself a singer, and she was in that really bad karaoke movie yes, with Huey was. Lewis yes, she called was. Duets, I believe. Yes, it was. So I don't think there is any way but it's got to be a singer though it's got to be a because really? lady gaga barbara streisand singers first, judy garland right? but then i think the the lady who is in the original version back in the 30s i don't know if she was a singer though well, that's that's 100 years ago oh, okay so what about here's some possibilities oh goodness <laughs> 90 singers who could have been in a star is born alanis morissette alanis morissette <laughs> oh, yeah. beyonce gwen stefani get ready for this one Sinead O'Connor. 
Oh, yeah. Man. How awesome would that have been? Hard pass on that. Mariah Carey, Madonna, Ooh. Celine Dion. No, these people are all too... Well, I didn't realize Lady Gaga is in her early 30s now. Yeah. And I for this role, for some reason... But, but she seems younger, even though she's been around and she's been a thing for like a solid 10 years now. Yeah. She seems like she should still be in her mid-20s. Mm-hmm. So that's... That's where you're coming from? Yeah. So like Gwen Stefani would have fit that bill in the, in the 90s, mm-hmm. but Mariah would have been aging out at that point. Madonna definitely would have been too old at mm-hmm. that point. Like Christina Aguilera, Aguilera. Kate Bush. Oh, oh goodness. Gloria Estefan. No, she was way too old at that point. Which, Annie Lennox. No. Diane Ross, Leanne Rimes. Avril Lavigne. No, she didn't even become a thing until the early 2000s. I'm sticking with Gwyneth Paltrow. Who would have been the guy? So the guy would be, so we go from Chris Christopherson to Bradley Cooper. <laughs> yeah. And the bridge there would be, let's see, 90s actors. Uh, <laughs> please uh, let me please see. pardon this uh, pause while Dalt Googles no. 90s actor. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know I was Googling them? There's no way you could see that. Uh, Matt Dillon <laughs> was the first one who showed up. Oh, interesting. Oh, Cameron Diaz. Well, no, she wasn't a singer. But. No, it's got to be a singer. It's got to be a singer and then an actor dude, right? So I'm, I'm still saying Gwyneth Paltrow. That's what I'm hanging my hat on. And Hugh Jackman. He wasn't a thing in the 90s, though. No, but... Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant and Gwyneth Paltrow? Yeah, And a star is born. Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> Who would go see that? I don't... Yeah, Hugh Grant was a little too emo even mm-hmm. probably for that a little too awkward <laughs> oh wait who would have been a uh, a grunge guy who would have been uh, trying to go legit at that point oh like, yeah maybe eddie vetter or uh eddie vetter and Sk- gwyneth paltrow <laughs> 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 in a star is born yes. <laughs> oh uh no the 90s would have been too late oh sean penn oh yeah can maybe. you imagine him singing oh it would be terrible yeah uh know. daniel day lewis Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's good in everything he does. Tom Hanks. Ooh, no. Robert De Niro. What about Pacino? Pacino, yeah. No, these guys are way too old. Leonardo DiCaprio. No. He he was way too young then at that point. Well, I, I'm only going by what the Google machine tells me. Okay, so our, our call for the 90s version of A Star is Born, Eddie Vedder. And Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> this is this is our '90s casting. <laughs> Star is born. That would be so awesome. And I don't think we're going to be able to top that. No, definitely not. Although, if you have suggestions that we brain farted and overlooked, please. I've gotten hurl and fart in this uh, podcast yeah. now, so thanks. Please uh, drop us a line and let us know your dream casting for 90s A Star is Born. And then one of these days we'll make sure to check the inbox for cokewindults at gmail.com. Or you could just uh, slide into our DMs and uh, send us a Facebook message. I have no idea what that means. It sounds vaguely (laughs) erotic. (laughs) And that's it for another week of Coco and Dalts. Uh, we thank you for waiting around for this episode. We know that you enjoyed it and we know that you feel that it was worth it. Hopefully we'll see you again before New Year's. And I'm not Coco. And I'm not Dalts. <laughs>